know if this helps out at all. Okay, I'm going to try the other mic. If not, we may have to cancel the video because I don't really know what I, else I can do at, uh, at this point of it. It's kind of frustrating. <laughs> uh, so just give me a second. Oh, wait a second. I'm going to try something, okay? All right. Now do you hear anything? Okay, so my, because this is my iPad, I had it plugged in a bit before this, and I forgot to unplug it. So that was the uh, reasoning behind it. Solved. Thank you. Thank you guys for helping out. That, uh, that does help a lot. Anyway, tonight we are talking Doctor Who. I'm going to give, tell you my favorite Doctor Who stories. I'm going to go through my entire Doctor Who collection. Uh, uh, I'll even let you know the doctors I like, what, are, what order I like them in, and my thoughts. Hey, Tommy, on, on every one of the uh, Doctor Whos there. I will explain to you why, if you're a Doctor Who collector, you do need to have those new Blu-ray sets that have, that have come out. And if you haven't, but you've been kind of wondering where you should start with Doctor Who, why these sets that are out now might just be the uh, the way to go with it. So there's going to be uh, a lot of geeky, who, whovian, nerdy stuff there, which should be fun. So let me take a sip of my tea now that we're not buzzing. Now let me know, however, if uh, I have this on, this thing here, but let me try this. So. If I take this off, is the sound louder? Is it? Because I worry sometimes that this is going to muffle the sound. So you guys are kind of like my testing. Uh, you guys let, let me know, which is good. I, I appreciate that. So when you guys let me know that the buzzing was there, I was getting nervous, kind of freaking out. You guys helped me get through it. Sounds the same? But we'll just leave it. We'll leave it off for right now. Anywho. I got my uh, big cup of tea, and is it, does anybody here watch or used to watch Doctor Who? That's the first question I want to ask you guys. This almost looks like a bowl of tea, doesn't it? Because it'd be really awesome if somebody here you never watched Doctor Who in your life, and like B movies in your name, like Doctor Who was like legitimately like the original series was like the the B movie, like on TV. Watched it when Peter Davison was a doctor. Nice. The actual, the, the pants that I chose for this video was, which you can't see very well, but they're the tan ones, were, uh, were chosen uh, because of, uh, of Peter Davison, actually. I actually legitimately thought out what I was going to wear today uh, because I wanted this video to be special. It means a lot to me. Remember some Tom Baker episodes, nice. That's the best. For me, Javid, Tom Baker is, is my favorite era of Doctor Who. I, I do like the newer Doctor Who as well, but I'm, uh, I'm kind of old school, and I'm, uh, I'm a big fan. See, B-movie, it's not really, it doesn't come off like, especially the old stuff as a show. If you're like a Hammer movie fan or something like that, then I say look into the Tom Baker, like the Philip Hinchcliffe, Robert Holmes era, because that is very much Hammer related. Now, how geeky am I for Doctor Who? Well, just wait here for one second. Just one second, and uh, you'll see. Ah, let's watch this. It's eating me alive. You're telling me apart, Lisa. So this here, this, just going to put on for a second, hopefully you guys can hear me, is the coat for the 10th Doctor. So this was made by a company called Abbey Shop. Uh, it's the, uh, this is actually the 10th Doctor coat, 
which I bought and which cost me a uh, Dr. Vincent. Hey, I actually like that. It cost me quite a bit. And I actually got a, like a, a yo-yo. This is actually my favorite coat. When I was in university, to uh, to Mun actually, I was wearing this out one day because I uh, honestly because I just I just wanted to. It was it was, a, it was like a uh, a windy day. Yeah, Dr. Who tonight, Andy. I didn't get back to you yesterday. I apologize. I actually went. I saw your message this morning on Facebook. I uh, went right into uh, Murder She Wrote last night and just watched the marathon or in six episodes in a row. But this is my uh, this is my Doctor Who coat. It's like obviously it's a Who coat, so it's it's long, and uh, it's from David Tennant's era of the Doctor. Of course, I'm not going to keep this on right now because it is very very warm. So I'm gonna just put this over on top of my lip to go right now until I can get it put back in the clothes closet. Yes, it is 420 over here, and uh, it's legal over here too. So uh, always uh, always good. Tom Baker hat. I would love to have the Tom Baker. Uh, I love the scarf and the hat. I was a huge Tom Baker fan. Um, he seemed to get the alien aspect of the Doctor right. And in all honesty, did it really ever seem like Tom Baker was playing the role or he was just the role? I think Tom Baker was just the role. And that's one of the important things. For me, I'm a huge fan of uh, I'm a huge fan of all the doctors, but uh, Tom Baker was was my favorite. Javid, <laughs> there you go, Javid. Tom Baker's probably my favorite doctor. Uh, I grew up like with uh, with, with him and watching his uh, his stories. Uh, but if like, and I'll go for the I'm gonna go. I separate the classic doctors from the from the newer doctors. I like, I was a really big fan of Tom Baker. I like John Pertwee. I really think that as an actor, especially when they did the Big Finish audience. Doctor Who originally was cancelled in 1989. I guess I should start at the beginning. Um, right on, Andy. Doctor Who was a show that was started back in the 60s. It was created, well, by a Canadian, actually. A Canadian came up with the idea of a, uh, of a man traveling in a, in a time box. Uh, so what happened is Sidney Newman spoke to... He was where, where, where a gummage. That is, that's exactly who you're thinking of. Uh, Sidney Newman wanted to create a new show, a kind of a, a Doctor Who show. Now he was work, he was Canadian. I was working over uh, in uh, in the BBC. I think it was in the drama department, and he went to Verdi Lambert, and between them and the director for the first uh, se se series of Doctor Who, they uh, they got down. They started to get down what Doctor Who was going to be. Now, unfortunately, the day that they premiered the show was the day of the Kennedy assassination. Not the best start for the series. So obviously that made some differences. That end, if you go back and you watch the first uh, Doctor Who episode, uh, it's a, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, and this is a, it's right here. It's a little on the, uh, on the slower side. It's different. And he's not, it's called An Unearthly Child. And he's not exactly a nice guy. He's a, uh, he, in fact, in the very first uh, episode, I think it's the first or second second episode in this in this series, um, he kind of almost commits murder. He's stopped from like bashing in a caveman's head. I'm not joking. You can go and check this out. You, you'll see this. Uh, much darker character back then. Now, the one thing to keep the show going over the years that they did for people that don't watch the show or have never seen the show is they've deci they decided that a really neat idea is that if the doctor gets in like in serious physical harm oh yeah Jeff we get an amazing image where this is Canada where, the, where I grew up in uh, in Newfoundland and we were very very like centric to uh... <laughs> yeah, we're, <clears throat> we're, we're very centric to like to British programming we uh, we watched a lot of British programming so basically uh, you know, we got Doctor Who, Faulty Towers, Minder, Coronation Street, uh, later on EastEnders, all that type of stuff. Blake Seven, uh, yes, which I do have the complete series of actually, all four series of it. Uh, Blake Seven, Red Dwarf, all that. Um, and of course, I was a big fan of uh, Douglas Adams before, I guess, before he became famous 
with, <laughs> with The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because uh, he was on Doctor Who first. Uh, actually, he was kind of doing Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when he was, when he was uh, actually writing for Doctor Who. And he left Doctor Who after being the showrunner for a bit like one year, actually. He only did one series as a showrunner uh, because of the popularity, uh, kind of the massive explosion of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. But he, he, there is a series uh, which is uh, ran by uh, by Douglas Adams, and it's uh, it's pretty glorious. Actually, I, I thought so anyway. And it's like one that, one of those like uh, kind of contained ones with a story arc that's going all the way through. Something that happens all the time now in the new series. Now, Doctor Who, when it, in its original run, ran from the 1960s up until 1989. Uh, that's something I guess you should know, ran for a very, very long time. And it wasn't a show that went on like once a week. It was a, it was a half hour long program. It, and if I, correct me if I'm wrong, I, sh, I have some British people over here, over here that, that'll let me know when I'm wrong. Uh, but Doctor Who kind of uh, went on like two to three times a week, right? And it, and it was always like, it was always continued. It was a serialized show. Now here in North America though, we didn't get it as a serialized show. Not right away, not until much later on, when I was in college actually, then they showed the serialized shows in reruns on, uh, on, on YTV. What we would get was the omnibus version of it, and it would show on PBS in the, uh, late in the evening. So I would have to stay up till like, usually it would come on like 12 or 1 o'clock at night, and I would stay up till like, sometimes, depending on the length of the episode. If it was something like Inferno, it could be extremely long, uh, see, you're, you're lucky, 6 p.m., like, I had, it was late night. I had to, when I was a kid, I had to basically make sure, you know, I had to keep my eyes pried open, um, especially if it was really late at night, and I'd been, like, out, like playing soccer or football today. Um, I'd get in, it'd be time for Doctor Who, and my, uh, my uncle, he's not with us anymore, unfortunately, he passed away um, quite a while ago. But uh, he used to always try to send me to bed, and I'd be like, you know, I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine, I, 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 can, I can last. And he'd always be like, yeah, I said, you're there, you know, with toothpicks in you, keeping your eyes open. Uh, missed the guy a lot, actually. But uh, anyway, so it was, uh, I think it was Saturday nights. I'm pretty sure it was Saturday nights. I think it might have changed to Sunday later on. But uh, we, we get it in the omnibus format. So that's kind of like if you bought Doctor Who originally on VHS, when it first came out in BBC, using you know, the old BBC video logo that they used to have. Uh, with the big oversized uh, like uh, VHS, well those uh, those would be in the omnibus format. They would have you know the the other stuff you know the beginnings cut out. They wouldn't have like the episode going on to the next next episode. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, for me, Doctor Who was it was the be all end all. I had a long Tom Baker esque scarf. I'm not joking. I really did. I was I was kind of geeky, and I liked it. Now. This is the best one, Scalder, because you can let me make you a Doctor Who fan. Because you should be. You really should be. Doctor Who was the reason I, I went region free. Uh, a lot of people don't actually know that, but this here was my first Doctor Who buy that I bought uh, when I started recollecting. The first thing I ever bought on uh, Doctor Who was, was for my, uh, was for my oldest. And I got her, uh, Pyramids of Mars on VHS back in the day. Well, I really got us Pyramids of Mars. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so this is The Deadly Assassin. This is one of my favorite episodes of Doctor Who. It is the return of, a, of the character called The Master. And it is the only ser series in the entire run of the original classic show where the Doctor does not have a companion. I think my cat is kind of like, just really, really curious. <clears throat> it's always been a favorite of mine. This, if you're in, from the UK, you're really going to like this. So this episode here really, really peeved Mary Whitehouse. It really did. And anybody that's against censorship and remembers the Video Nasty Era, or have, have heard about the Video Nasty Era, You've probably heard about this episode. This is the episode that angered Mary Whitehouse, the uh, the staunch, evil pro censorship girl that uh, lady that we all know, and 
don't really love. Mary Whitehouse hated this episode. There's a sequence in, I think, the second or third episode of this where the Doctor is, is fighting a, a bad guy in, uh, in the Matrix. Video Nasties, it's uh, basically it's an era in the, uh, in the UK uh, where uh, they took a, a hard stance, censorship stance. On, uh, on Doctor Who, uh, not, on, not on just on Doctor Who, but on everything. I mean, like, there's a whole list. There's, I think there's 80-something movies that were banned in the UK. Some of them were banned for years, stuff like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Pieces, a lot of films. So uh, for, uh, for our UK brethren, uh, there were films that for a long time they couldn't see, and there's some that they still cannot see completely uncut due to the uh, video nasty era. I don't think so, actually. I don't think Clockwork Orange is one of them. <clears throat> uh, think of other things, of things like Anthropopagus, for instance. That would be uh, one of those there. And uh, there's a whole list. I'll, I'll do a video. Tell you what, I would do a video completely, in this week sometime, on, uh, on video nasties. I'll go through my, uh, my video nasties that I've got, and I will go through my video nasty documentaries and that as well. <clears throat> and we'll do like a whole video on it. That way we can get we can really get in depth on it because that's something that really does need its own video. It's an enormous uh, part of movie history, and it's a very interesting part of movie history. I'm not going to lie to you. Every uh, every country really did have some form of what is called the video nasties, but it's mostly famous for uh, for the UK. They uh, they had it pretty rough over there with that. So. So further ado, what I'm going to do first is I am going to dive into the, the Dark True collection. Now, a lot of these I got from a, a hardcore collector in the day. Now, what's really neat about that? I, well, actually, it's a great idea, Andy. Um, is that uh, he lived in, in London. And uh, he met many of the people that acted, produced, directed, Doctor Who. So he was having a little one. Maniac was definitely bad. <laughs> uh, and he sold off a lot of his collection. So a lot of these here are actually autographed by the, by the people that acted in the show. So sometimes if I can pick up the autograph, I'll mention that along the way. So since I don't have a lot of hardcore Whovians in here, which is uh, was, was what Doctor Who fans call, call themselves, well, they should. There's some Doctor Who fans that just, you know, like you get some Trekkie fans who, who just for some reason won't say the word Trekkie because they think, oh, no, that's, you know, that's insulting for me. It's not really. It's really silly. It's really, really silly. So, yeah, let's start with the, with the regular stuff. First up is the beginning. This is the first three serials for Doctor Who series. So there's Unearthly Child, the Daleks, which of course is the one that made it famous. That's the Terra Nation creation. The Terra Nation creation, yeah, that rhymes. And of course, the Edge of Destruction, which is my favorite of the, of the original three. Most people love the Daleks most. I just really like the really trippy weirdness of the uh, nice Andy. Uh, you just gain cool points. You just gain extra cool points, by the way. So this is a slim case. If you uh, eagle-eyed people watching earlier uh, would have noticed that I also have, uh, have the original case as well. So I managed to grab this one from a guy that was selling it on Kijiji, and uh, it's the original edition. Now, one of the neat little things to know about this is when they put this out, they made a mistake in the printing. So... This is an unearthly child, but where this one says Edge of Destruction, that's actually the Daleks. And where that one says the Daleks, that's actually Edge of Destruction. They actually reversed them. And I don't think it was ever, uh, ever fixed in, uh, afterwards. Us Whovians sometimes get, the hard, get a hard rap when it comes to that stuff. Next up, and this one was, uh, is autographed by Verdi Lambert and Caroline Ford and William Russell. So Andy, <laughs> you'll get a kick out of this. And this is a classic uh, Who tale, The Aztecs, which is a fantastic story. 
and it, it's the first one that really, if I remember correctly, this is the first one that really deals with the ramifications of, uh, of, of altering time. Sometimes you have to let things happen. How timely did this story stay? Well, later on, there would be a story called The Fars of Pompeii that would become really popular in the new Who series for a couple of reasons. One, because the, my cat over there, the one you're seeing right there in the background, his, his name is Bruno. I've got two other cats here. One is, uh, is Scaredy. You're probably never going to see him on camera. And the other cat is uh, Hubert, who is uh, sleeping in the, uh, in the cat tree. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a throwback. Hey, Adrian. To, uh, to the kind of, the, well, Fires of Pompeii is very much a throwback to this. But it's really neat that uh, they have so many of the people actually autograph it. Next up is a kind of a fun teaser one. This is definitely one that you want to watch if, if you like the cheesy B-movie stuff. And that is Planet of Giants. So as you can see, it's the giant ants. Kind of fun stuff like that. So it's fun, kind of a monstery kind of throwback. Uh, not a not a really deep Doctor episode, but but just a fun one. Next up is one of my personal favorites in the original Doctor series, and it's it's done slightly differently. And that's the Keys of Marinus. Now this is William Hartnell. I guess I should go through. William Hartnell was the first guy to play Doctor Who. He was pretty much famous for playing guys older than he was and authority authoritarian type of figures. Hartnell would be in the first Carry On film, for instance, and um, he would, hey Isaac, would do, would do a lot of stuff over the years. Unfortunately, throughout the years, Hartnell had some health issues. Oh yeah, I'll get this in Tom Baker, don't worry. I'm going in, in I'm trying to go in order, like uh, for, the, for the singles, then I'll do the, the box sets as well. So Keith and Marinus was famous because this was the first one that was an over arc. So basically... You know, they would always continue from episode to episode. And, you know, usually there'd be a cliffhanger at the end. Keys and Marinus did something different. It basically, it told like an, a story. But the, I love that movie. It, it gets me. I, I've watched it a few times, Isaac, The Adventures in Time and Space. It's a movie that Isaac's talking about. And um, David Bradley plays William Hartnell in the film. And he does a fantastic job in the role. And it gets me, as, what's, what's my kids would say? I'm going to kill this thing. Uh, I've, is the, uh, it gets me the feels. Scholar, you will see many different videos. Many Arrow videos, and many Scream Factory videos, and many Vinegar Syndrome videos. The good thing about doing a live video is it's never quite, it's never quite the same each time. You'll see more Doctor Who videos down the road, too. Because it's my personal favorite of all the things that are that are close to me, when I, I talk about slashers, talk about yellows, my, my favorite genres of films, talk about your nasties and stuff like that, this is my thing. This is this means a lot to me. While well, I'll be getting the new blue releases, that is exactly why this video is being done. That is precisely why I'm doing this video right now. I do want to get the new blue releases. I wasn't sure at first. I've uh, been doing some research on them. <laughs> All right. And uh, I definitely want to, uh, to do more, uh, more on Doctor Who. Oh, more on Doctor Who. More, I want to get the Blu-ray sets. So when I get them, I'll definitely be showing those off. I will be getting those. I don't know if I'll get the big collector's editions that they got in, uh, in London, in the one in the UK. But I will definitely be getting the editions. They're coming out here in North America as well. My favorite doctor is, uh, is probably Tom Baker. That's, uh, that's, I know it's a really boring answer because you know, a lot of people say that. Uh, my better half, um, she has a favorite doctor as well uh, from the classic series. She, I, think, I think she liked Davison. She liked Peter Davison. And uh, if for the new series of Doctor Who, I kind of go back and forth. Uh, as I, I love Tennant, obviously. I got, if, yeah, no, don't catch this out, at the beginning of the video, We'll run back afterwards. I actually do have the tenth Doctor coat, uh, but I uh, I do like Matt Smith a lot too. I just don't think that he had as good as scripts as Tennant did, uh, and Capaldi is just old school. He's really old school. Uh, I like them all actually. Um, I, I like the new Doctor, the uh, 
uh, Jodie Whittaker. I don't think that the scripts have been helping her though. Uh, they really got to write better scripts for for her. Good actress, bad like bad writing in the show. Eccleston, Eccleston's awesome. Eccleston is the most see. Back in the day, I was like the thing is that I wanted to act. I grew up doing acting classes and drama and doing like school plays and off Broadway plays. And I wanted to do, I wanted to act. And one of the things that I wanted to do, one of the big things that I wanted to do, I wanted to be in an episode of Doctor Who. I wanted to, I wanted to play the Doctor. And if I couldn't do that, I wanted to play somebody on one of the shows. In 1989, I graduated from high school. And I had to make the decision of, my grandparents were like, you know, you know, Acting's not exactly the most stable job in the world. Maybe you should try something else first. So I got accepted in two places. I got accepted to Western Ontario for, uh, for drama. And I got accepted to, uh, to a local college in, in, my, uh, in a Steamville for journalism. Now, uh, I hadn't made up my mind. And I, uh, I, I had to choose which one to go to. I <laughs> first did <introduction>. Nice. <laughs> uh, and Doctor Who was cancelled in 1989. And being young and impetuous, I uh, went to journalism and didn't go on to do my drama in Ontario because one of my biggest goals for, for doing it in the first place was, was Doctor Who. And that was no more. Yeah, it was. I actually quit acting and went into uh, and went into journalism. So Doctor Who really did do things in my life. So, Keys of Marinus. <laughs> so we're getting into the second Doctor here. I got uh, a couple more of his. And second Doctor was played by Patrick Troughton. And Doctor Who, the series, basically, for people watching this. Hey, Ben. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope it was a hard night for a good reason. Um, we're talking Doctor Who tonight, so hopefully that's something you're interested in. Um, so what they decided to do, William Hartnell had to leave the show. Uh, rather than like just cancel the show or, or just have an actor and pretend that he's William Hartnell or I've got the look kind of like William Hartnell, <laughs> is that this is an alien. They can do anything they want. So they decided that wouldn't it be a neat idea if when something bad happened to the doctor, when the doctor got physically hurt, when he, when he died, per se, rather than dying, he regenerated into a new person, into a new actor. He didn't have to look like the other actor. He didn't have to be the same height, same size. His temperament didn't have to be the same. His, the way he acted didn't have to be the same. In actuality, it could be completely different. Uh, it was one of the most genius ideas you, you can ever imagine. And I think to write a lot of the, the original episodes, the classic episodes, especially, especially for Doctor Number One and uh, and Doctor Two, were lost. Because uh, back in the day, what they would do is they would get rid of tapes. They tape things over. They never thought that there'd be VHS or DVD or Blu-ray or 4K or anything like that, where they'd be, you know, BBC would be making a bunch of money off them years later. They know pretty much thought, okay, this is going to be shown till it's shown. And then, uh, then they'd usually erase the tape, maybe make a blue Peter over that tape or something like that, which was a children's show in the UK, by the way. Um, fortunately, for some of the lost episodes, some of them were sold to other countries, kind of like in a package deal. Like uh, it was cheap to buy Doctor Who, so a lot of like uh, countries over in uh, in France and uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, in places like Morocco, Africa, places like that, they would buy uh, lots of Doctor Who. So would Australia actually, and. Uh, Uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll be, I'm doing a stream sometime this week. Hit the notification thing, you know, for, for sure. Then. Uh, but um, that's the thing. A lot of them were, were lost. And that you would find only parts of it. That's why they put out originally this set right here. And it's called Lost in Time. Collecting, you know, classic 
like rare episodes. What this was in a lot of cases was this basically had episodes of a, you know, of, of series that weren't complete. So you'd see like an episode here or an episode there. Um, like episode one and three from Moonbase or episode, you know, some, an episode or two from like, uh, from Daleks, like stuff from Daleks Master Plan or Web of Fear. Now some of these were found later on. Other ones, but my kitty do himself in peace. Yeah, other ones basically they didn't find and they just did. Uh, thanks for being with guys. Enjoy your evening there. Uh, other ones basically did uh, just like Isaac said, they did an animation because they still had the audio track. They just didn't have the video. So there's so much that does get lost over the, over the years. So this one right here is the Underwater Menace. You can see some of the really kind of like cheap, cheesy stuff. But what was really good about this is that uh, some of the stuff like this obviously didn't look good no matter what it was in, a black and white or color. You can obviously see that looks pretty cheesy. <laughs> but uh, a lot of them actually looked uh, pretty decent in, uh, in black and white. Color would uh, definitely be a, a, bit of a, a bit of a bane to uh, Doctor Who when they first started. Uh, Peter, uh, so Peter Cushing. Oh no, actually it's based on original, uh, an original idea by Sidney Newman. It was a Canadian guy that worked over in the BBC. Uh, they made two movies. Amicus Films actually made two Doctor Who movies. Uh, oh yeah. And there they are right there. Doctor Who and the Daleks and Invasion Earth. Uh, that's what's... It. So both these were uh, done by Peter with Peter Cushing. Now, they were done different. For some reason, they decided that to make it more accessible, this Doctor Who would not be from Gallifrey, which is the planet the Doctor was from. He would not be a Time Lord, which in the series he is. Uh, what he would be is a... Uh, he'd be just a normal inventor that had like a, a granddaughter and Daleks. So what was cool about this is that when, this, when these movies came to the theater, uh, of course, Doctor Who was still in black and white. This would be the first time that anybody would see Doctor Who in, in color, would be uh, watching these two films right here from Amicus Films. And uh, where, you know, where Hammer had their uh, had the Quatermass uh, films, Amicus had the much more kid-friendly uh, Doctor Who films. And they, were, uh, they did some fantastic stuff with that. So that's the, uh, that's the Peter Cushing ones. So you're right, uh, there are Peter Cushing was they played Doctor Who twice. So next up is the Crotons. And you see they're kind of like a, a cheesy... I'm not sure about America, I probably around the same time, I'd say. Uh, see, in the, uh, around the John Pertwee, the late John Pertwee era, is, uh, is when Doctor Who really came out here in, uh, in like Canada and America. But it was like it was Tom Baker that kind of popularized the Doctor. Uh, that's why if you watch The Simpsons or you have many other different shows and, you, and they mention or reference Doctor Who at all, or they show even an animated version of Doctor Who, it's usually the Tom Baker version with the long scarf and the, and the big teeth that you see. Uh, that's, that's the reasoning behind that, that he became truly popular over here uh, in, uh, during the Tom Baker era. So I'd probably say when Tom Baker took over the Doctor, probably in around 74, is when they really started showing Doctor Who here kind of like on a regular basis. Uh, John Pert, he was pretty much shown kind of after the fact. So yeah, I could, you know, anybody that's, that's older than me can correct me if, if I'm wrong, but uh, I think that will be around the right thing. So the Crodons, of course, uh, been on this. they were one of the many villains that were used to, I started watching it in about, let's see, it's 75, maybe 75 or so. I was really young. Actually, I was around three or four years old. I have not. I've met Jamie, uh, the second Doctor's companion. I had the chance to meet Colin Baker, which is a favorite of mine. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I moved here in the exact same year that Colin Baker came to, uh, to Newfoundland for a, uh, a sci-fi convention. I was always really saddened by that. I'm hoping... I always hope when I, every time I go to a convention that I'm going to meet a doctor there. Sometime soon, I'm hope, I hope to meet one of the uh, one of the many people that played doctor. Shook Sylvester McCoy's hand. Sylvester McCoy seems like a really nice guy. 
I always liked his the physicality that he brought to the role of Doctor Who. Uh, I have the one I wanted to meet, Paul. The uh, the compa my companion. I figured it would be. That's nice to hear, Isaac. Is of course uh, is Sarah Jane. And unfortunately, Sarah Jane is no longer with us. Uh, that she was played by Elizabeth Sladen, and she was the uh, third and fourth Doctor's companion. As uh, Tom Baker's Doctor would say during Pyramids of Mars, she's my very best friend, and uh, she stood out. Sarah Jane was different. She was the journalist. She did. She was tough and spunky, and she did things. She didn't just wait around. She wasn't uh, wasn't like Doctor. What's this or I, she, uh, she she kind of changed the tide for uh, for companions in my my opinion. Uh, they started to do it before, but I think Sarah Jane really cemented that, and uh, that you'd see that come out. Uh, that was an awesome man, Katie Manning, very bubbly. Like I, I can picture that even like in any everything I see her in. Uh, was Katie Manning? Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and you know, please do. Didn't she do like a kind of a, a nude spread with uh, with some Daleks? Yes, it is, uh, Jay. But this is my this is why you're gonna get a lot more actual, probably factual information on on this as opposed to some of the other videos I do. Uh, Doctor was my favorite show of all time. It isn't just a show that I liked or sure that show. It was my all-time favorite show. And when I was scrawny little geeky, uh, Aaron back in high school. Hey, Sasha, we're talking Doctor Who tonight. Uh, then uh, this was the show that I'd go to. This was the show that I'd watch sometimes. And uh, I'd buy the books because a lot of times episodes were lost. Is she on Twitter? I gotta, I gotta follow her. Uh, but anyway, so Terry Nation created the Daleks and he always kept saying they'd always want more Daleks because the Daleks were extremely popular. However, Terry Nation can be a bit of an ass and uh, really hard to get along with. So, uh, they always tried to create other Dalek type characters to see if they could take the place of the Daleks so that they wouldn't have to be paying Terry Nation or going to him so often. So the Crotons were one of those uh, were one of those characters. He always be on relaxed. It's 420, man. <laughs> He's totally relaxed. Uh, the last episode of uh, of the Patrick Troughton era was the war was war games. It was a, wasn't supposed to be as long as it was. It was actually supposed to be two. Uh, like different ones. So this is a three disc set. This is a 10 episode serial by the way. This one actually runs 10 episodes long. It's actually a pretty cool one. I did like this one. Uh, he gets a very different regeneration than any other doctor would. Usually what happens with, with the doctor is he'll come into some very serious physical harm or get hit like by, by something, fall off of a... Uh... Colin Baker, by far and large. Isaac, I think that if Colin Baker's run as a doctor would have been, they're way more sinister in this one. Would have been a uh, the way that he that they wanted it done if they would have gotten the time and there wouldn't have been a break in between the show and they could have went in the way in the route that they wanted to go. Uh, Colin Baker could have been one of the the greatest doctors of all time. Uh, Baker is very pantomime in on, on the series. That's you know that's a given. But uh, and he came in at a bad time. Baker, Colin Baker was the sixth guy to play Doctor Who. He uh, came in, was the first Doctor that was coming in with, a, with an actual story arc. His Doctor was going to be very unlikable and become likable over time. Uh, now, around the time that he came in, though, there was a guy named Michael Grade that was working with BBC. He'd become kind of the head of BBC. His wife hated Doctor Who. She really wanted that off, off of the air. Uh, so what happened is he came on, normally what will happen is somebody will, will regenerate and uh, he'll turn into like the, uh, and then the doctor, he'll turn into the doctor and then he'll start in the next series, right? The next like series, like, it's, let's say he regenerates series eight and comes up in series 10, series nine, you know, it's a new doctor. But they wanted to do something different. They want, so they made him the doctor, they made him regenerate before. So he had one series, one like episode basically. Uh, before. Can you watch any episodes and get into it? I would say if you're going to want to watch something like to kind of get into it, uh, I'm going to mention some sets uh, in, a, in a little bit that, uh, that might help you out. 
uh, when it comes to that. I, for accessibility, Javit, if you're a fan of like, uh, of like older movies or like monster movies or maybe hammer horror, stuff like that, I always say Tom Baker is probably the most accessible doctor for that type of stuff. And I'll, I'll explain that. And what's really neat is you can buy his first set, set on Blu-ray. Now, so you can see his, uh, it's, I think that's five or six stories. Michael Grade was horrible. I, I, I hate saying, you know, Michael Grade, unfortunately, he's passed away. Uh, it doesn't change the horrible things that he did. Uh, and he did some pretty horrible stuff to, uh, to Doctor Who and to other programming as well. But uh, after the first series that Colin Baker played Doctor Who, basically, I'll kind of make a long story short, the show was taken off for 18 months. We'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, it, came, it was brought back. And he got to do a series called, which was an arcing, a big story arc called Trial of a Time Lord. They did that literally because Doctor Who itself, the show, was on trial. Michael Grade really, really wanted to get that canceled. And they were doing everything they could to keep it coming back. Oh, wow. Uh, do you know what? But, that'd be awesome. Like, if your mom's got a picture or something with Tom Baker, you you. you if you're doing a video, you should totally show, totally show that. You really need to. Uh, so uh, when it came back, they did the Trial of a Time Lord, and they were worried that it was going to get canceled. But it got brought back. John Nathan Turner was given it a, a choice. So he ended up, he made the choice, and he called Colin Baker over the phone and said, you know, well, I got some good news, and I got some not so good news. The good news is, Doctor Who is coming back for uh, for another year, and Colin Baker was ecstatic. Colin Baker had been interviewed many times in in Starlog magazine. He said he wanted to be the he wanted to beat Tom Baker, the longest running Doctor who ran in the series for seven years. Uh, he wanted to beat Tom Baker's run of the Doctor. He wanted to go for over seven years. He was really committed to the show. The good news is it's coming back. The bad news is we have to recast the Doctor. Colin Baker was devastated. He couldn't believe that this was happening to him. He jumped through so many hoops. Uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the time that he did, he went on like promotional things. He even did a horrible, horrible song when the show was off the air in between called uh, Doctor in Distress. But uh, unfortunately, your mom sounds awesome. He didn't get the chance to do that, and uh, he got screwed over. They, uh, they asked him to come back so they could do a regeneration scene, so you know, so the new guy could take over, and uh, and he could just do like a scene. He said, "Well, tell you what, you let me do this series here. Series is season in in the UK. It's like it's, a show is a show, and a series is like a." Sort of Isaac. But uh, he said, well, you let me do the next series. And I'll go out. I'll bow out on, at the end of the next series. Just give me something good to work with so I, gotta, so I can actually tell a story. And, and I don't just come on for like one scene to go out. And John Nathan turns said, well, we can't do that. He said, well, can you give me one, the first series, the first like, episodes for that series, like the first four. And I can go it that way. And like, we really just like you to come back to do that scene. And in no uncertain terms, by the time that John Nathan Turner got off that phone, he knew quite well that uh, he was not getting Colin ba Baker back to do that one scene. That was not going to happen. If you're really interested in the Colin Baker era of Doctor Who and you want to find it, want to watch a really, really good documentary on his era of Doctor Who and all the problems that went along with it, the Trial of a Time Lord came out as a box set. On that box set, there is a 60-something minute long documentary on Colin Baker's era and all the stuff that he went through, including part of the story that I just told uh, right now. It's, uh, it's, it's an interesting one to, uh, to check out, and uh, it's definitely a different one. And you meet probably one of the most attractive companions you'll ever see, and that is Perry Brown, who uh, we'll get to as well who's, uh, yeah, and definitely classic who. She's definitely one of the sexiest companions you'll ever, you'll ever see. 
War Games was Patrick Trenton's one. Like I was mentioned before, the Time Lords were kind of more introduced in around this time in the War Games episode. And the Doctor normally, he gets hurt and he changes to, he gets regenerated. But in this one here, the Time Lords, you know, being the benevolent beings that they are in this series, uh, they force the regeneration onto Patrick Troughton's Doctor and he becomes, well, becomes this guy, John Pertwee, who uh, some people, younger BBC, you know, will probably remember as, like, as Worlds of Gummage. And, uh, you know, definitely some people are going to remember him. We're going to look at him and say, he's kind of familiar. I, I don't watch Doctor Who, but he's kind of familiar. And maybe you watched The House of Your Blood. He was in the last, uh, you know, the last episode of that one um, in that film where he played the, uh, the vampire actor, the one that he did with Ingrid Pitt. So this is the, the demons. Um, they couldn't say demons, so they had to change it just a little bit. And this here is, uh, is Roger Delgado. He's the first actor to play the master. He would be the evil Time Lord that would like kind of go through the series. The master has been played by, by many different actors, including Roger Delgado, Anthony Anley, um, Jeffrey Beavers. Uh, there was uh, John Sims, Michelle Gomez. Basically, TV stuff. Like demons is, was evil and, and satanic. My favorite master. Uh, most people go with Delgado. That's you know that's the print. It's usually a given. I actually like the kind of the pantomime over the top version of Anthony Anley. Um, I really did. I and that's probably because it has a lot to do with that. Like Delgado is definitely the best for me. Aside from Sim, him and Sims are probably the best actors that, that played the master. Eric Roberts actually played him in the, uh, in the TV movie. Somebody just mentioned what was it like for me when it, when it went off and kind of came back. Well, <clears throat> when it came back as a TV movie, I felt extremely burnt because it was, the actor was fantastic in the role, but, this, but the movie was not that great. It, uh, it did well over in the UK, but it didn't do well at all. In, uh, in North America. In actuality, it was, gonna, it was, it was the pilot film for a, a new a spin off of Doctor Who. It was going to be, uh, it was going to come back. It just didn't do well. So, Paul McGann, who played the Doctor at that period of time, only got the plan once, like until, uh, well, later on, they did the uh, audios. The Deformed Master, the one you're talking about, was, well, there's two, but the most Deformed Master is the one in, uh, God. In uh, in the uh, Deadly Assassin, but uh, that's who most people think about when thinking like the Deformed Master. There's a uh, when he was brought back. Uh, I think it was Be I think it was Beavers that played him. Uh, that was like in a uh, Crispy Master exactly. That was, he was brought back in uh, in Keepers of Tracking. Uh, now it's neat because the actor Anthony Anley plays a different character. I think it's Tarmos or something like that. Uh, on uh, in Keepers of Track, he plays a nice guy, and uh, the master, because he's run out of his regenerations, that's why he's scarred. He can't regenerate anymore. The only way he can do it is if he can transform himself into another body, and if he does that, then he has a full set of new regenerations. So uh, he transforms himself into the body of this old man, this kindly old man who's played by a very young Anthony Anley, actually, in uh, in old age makeup. I'm usually with an iPhone too. Actually, <clears throat> uh, it's a shame that he couldn't have like done, done it actually as you know an actual series of it, not like they half asked what they gave him. <clears throat> but uh, he turned into like so basically he took the old age uh, makeup off of him, took the huge like beard and gave him the goatee. The master at the time was always known for his goatee, and Anley became he, he lived the role. If you've ever seen Anley in anything, he, he lived the role of the master. So this was the original master here, Roger Delgado. Incredible guy, unfortunately. He, uh... No, Anthony Anley passed away before the, the new series of Doctor Who, the one that came out in 2005, uh, happened. Uh, they brought the master back in, um, in the third series of the, of, of, the new, uh, of the new Doctor Who that came, that's, on, that's still going today. 
during uh, David Tennant's run. That's the it's the whole overarching Harold Saxon vote vote Saxon storyline. Uh, but uh, oh, Paul McGann. Oh, Paul McGann did get to come back during the dur during the anniversary to do like a short uh, episode where basically we get to see him transformed into uh, the doctor that we didn't know about previously, which is John Hurt's character of the War Doctor. Uh, basically, it's a a doctor that uh, that has to do things that Doctor really doesn't want to do, including uh, what he thinks at the time is genocide. One of my favorite episodes. This this is a really good one. What's really neat is the master comes, goes to this like small colloquial town, and uh, he goes there as like the as, as the guy as a man of the cloth, as the religious guy, and uh, it's it's really a good episode. He did give one hell of an episode, uh, a performance. I love that actually. As you can see, the thing that a lot of people that should be I guess mentioned about uh, John Pertwee's era is that uh, the ground of the Doctor. Uh, John Pertwee was the first uh, Doctor to be like shot in, in full color. His, uh, when he started, Doctor Who started color for the first time, they were worried that it wasn't going to last. Now with color, there was like extra costs and stuff that had come into, into the production. Access coming here, exactly. So uh, what they did was they uh, decided they were going to ground the Doctor. Let's move the can to what area? Lucky, smart person. <laughs> uh, so what they, uh, they grounded the doctor, the TARDIS didn't work anymore, the doctor had to work with UNIT, which was this, uh, this UK kind of like kind of government agency, and uh, he became their science advisor. It actually has a really good time. It was, it was a much, much more of a James Bondian style doctor who he had this car uh, that he used, and he had all these types of, uh, you know, he, he sword fought a bit more. It was very much an Avengers style. If you've ever seen the show The Avengers, uh, Doctor Who pretty much became like that for uh, for John Pertwee's time. Now, in the last series of John Pertwee, the tires started working again and he went around. But uh, for, uh, for a period of time there, Doctor Who did all of his adventuring on Earth. And it was actually a pretty glorious time. And it was a really easy way to get into it. Now, when he finally started going back, traveling in the TARDIS again, we got this here. Day of the Daleks and Death to the Daleks. Uh, the Daleks at this point hadn't been used for a pretty long period of time when they came back for this. Uh, so much so, in fact, <clears throat> that uh, they kind of forgot what they sounded like. So in the Daleks there, luckily there's, they fixed it later, but it, they do sound very, very different than the Daleks that you're used to. And, uh, and it's kind of a, kind of a pain, I'm not gonna lie. So, you wanted to know, do I have any Tom Baker? Let's go to Tom Baker's era. <clears throat> Baker was probably the most famous doctor, actor to ever play Doctor Who in the original series. Uh, if, you, if you've only watched the new Doctor Who series, then, you're, then David Tennant and Max, Matt Smith are probably the equivalent to what, uh, what Baker was back in, uh, back in his day. Now, he, ran, he played the Doctor for seven years. The most acclaimed period that he played the Doctor was the Philip Hinchcliffe uh, Robert Holmes era of Doctor Who. Uh, it was a darker Doctor Who, was more kind of like more hammer, more mystery, more horror oriented. Baker was huge. He was. <clears throat> Adrian is exactly right. So, needless to say, there was a lot <clears throat> to see from Baker. So, this is the last, as you can see, Sarah Jane's final story The Hand of Fear. This is the Elizabeth Slade and Sarah Jane. Which would lead into my, one of my all-time favorite stories, which is The Deadly Assassin, which I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And people wanted to see the Crispy Master, well, he's right there. He gave a lot of kids nightmares back in the day, and uh, that's why they toned him down when the Keeper Tracking came out. <clears throat> what I consider to be the all-time greatest Doctor Who story ever told, the most eccentric, he was the most eccentric, and I love interviews with him, talking about Doctor Who. He's, he's, it's amazing. Well, my all-time favorite Doctor Who story is because I knew I was going to was going to say that. And for a time, it was considered the all-time greatest Doctor Who story, and that is Genesis of the Daleks. 
if you have not seen this show, this isn't a bad starting point, actually. Um, it's a really, really good serial. Basically, <clears throat> the Time Lords tell the Doctor that they're going to bring him back to a specific period in time. <clears throat> Apologize. Um, they're going to bring him back to the creation of their greatest foe, their greatest enemy, the dialects. His job, to make it not happen. Exactly, but yes, but have I got the right? It's kind of like this, when you think of that, the old, like the adage about, you know, if you could go back in time and kill Hitler as a baby, could you do it? Uh, and what ramifications would that have on the world, both good and bad? Genesis of the dialect takes on, obviously not with Hitler, but with the dialects, takes on that, that story. And the doctor has to ask himself that question, which, as Paul said, do I have the right? Not just, you know, so many planets and people have been hurt and killed and destroyed because of these creatures, these Nazis, basically these pepper pot Nazis. But so many people were inspired for greatness and to, you know, because of atrocities that happened because of them. How much does one cancel at the other? And does he have the right to do that? If you want to find out, and I think you can guess what he's going to do, check out Jensen's the Daleks. It's a really great episode. <clears throat> Next up is the Mask of the Mandragora. Oh, I love the Misfits, especially the original. Near the end of it, <clears throat> they kept changing the cast and their powers. I wasn't so big on that, but I, I did like the original Misfits. Harry did work really well. So Harry, who uh, Ben's talking about there, when Tom Baker was cast to play the Doctor, actually before Tom Baker was cast to play the Doctor, they knew that Sarah Jane was going to be the companion, and they put in the character of Harry as well. Because uh, many of the Doctors had been older, so they had like a younger kind of a younger uh, person to do more of the physical stuff. Now, Tom Baker was a physical actor. <clears throat> Therefore, after a while, Harry's reasoning on the show kind of be, it kind of became a moot point. Uh, I really liked the character of Harry, actually. It was one of my favorites. Harry was a guy that wasn't just uh, a guy that he's passed on now, too, unfortunately. My least favorite uh, heir of Doctor Who Although I do like it a bit now, my least favorite era of Doctor Who would probably be the first year where Sylvester McCoy played the Doctor. Uh, I do I, I enjoy those shows now. I do think that Sylvester McCoy really became a fantastic Doctor after, and I don't think it has to do with like just the companion that he had. I think there was other aspects as well, but it was it was a it was a difficult transition period. I still like it. I just say the thing is I don't have any Doctor Who like era that I don't like. But that's that's probably the one that I go back to the least. Another one of the great episodes of Doctor Who, and one of the great villains, one time villains, because he never came back, was the great Sutek. And that was in Pyramids of Mars. Now Pyramids of Mars was a again a fantastic one. It was done during the Robert Holmes era. You know, we had the, the mummies. The Sutek was, a, was an amazing villain for uh, Doctor Who. And... Mel screaming. <laughs> uh, it wasn't really her fault. They just gave her, like, a really, really bad. Uh, Tom Baker, he, he did it for seven years. That's the thing. They do have, cats have a, animals have a, have a calming influence. Yep, not sure if you can see was well there now, but he's very relaxed. <clears throat> in the background there. Put you to sleep. Uh, Horror of Fang Rock. This has the, has of course, uh, Layla, not Layla, what's her name again? Oh my God, don't tell me I forgot. I did forget. I told her. Layla. Uh, great episode. 
Um, if you're a fan of Doctor Who, and if you're a fan of New Who, and you've seen like the the Santarans, they always talk about like in the Santarans, they always talk about this race that they're warring with all the time. The only time that you ever see this race at all, any time in Doctor Who, is during the horror of Fang Rock, and it is a, is a fantastic, uh, fantastic episode. Uh, very dark story, very almost kind of Agatha Christie esque ghost story, creepy story, really well done. And uh, on the other side of it, this is an okay story, not one of my favorites. Um, it's got the Doctor and the Second Romana, who I actually really do like. That is the Leisure Hive. As you can see, I got this one at a charity shop. So let me put these down here and get into <clears throat> some of the other. <clears throat> we haven't even gotten into my box set yet. We'll get into those in a minute. All right. So there was three more people to play the Doctor during the original series because we're at seven the actors all together. So this is Peter Davison, the youngest actor at the time to play the Doctor until Matt Smith would come break that record. This is the, uh, the Awakening. The Doctor Who does go into a horror a lot. Even in the new series, like uh, a lot of the episodes go kind of horrific. Look at the creatures like the Silence or the Weeping Angels. You can probably see in the background there, uh, or you've been able to see definitely that I've got the first seven series in the, <clears throat> of the new Doctor Who and along with the, the specials there on Blu-ray. It's The Awakenings. <clears throat> this is one of the historicals. I actually like the historicals a lot. This is The Five Doctors. Uh, this is a really good addition because this is a secret commentary on it, actually. <laughs> yeah, you can get some pretty traumatizing stuff there. So the guy that had played, Wim Hartnell, the guy that played the first Doctor, had passed on uh, by the time this show was done. <clears throat> so they had to get another actor to play the role. So this here is Richard Herdnell, who would take over the role of the uh, of the new doc of the first doctor, uh, because Hartnell had passed on. Now they had some contract disputes with uh, Tom Baker, who could be a little bit difficult. <clears throat> he was a guy that thought any Doctor Who show should be around him, uh, <laughs> so he decided not to do it. So they put an ep an episode that didn't get finished called Shada. They put the kind of the beginning of that in there and said that he was stuck in a, in a time uh, vortex. Uh, so his doctor gets stuck there. Next up is the King's Demons, which this is the Anthony Anley Master. So I showed you Roger Degato before. This is the actor that took over. As you can see, it's actually a good... Uh, and this one here, this is the, ma the master. This is the second master. This is Anthony Anley. He's the guy that would take over from Roger Degato as the, as, as, you know, the evil master. Master is one of the big characters. Earthshock, Isaac. Earthshock destroyed me as a kid. Now, I only have one single of the Sixth Doctor. And, uh... It's autographed by him. Uh, so it is Mark of the Rani. I love the character of the Rani. I, uh... I'm not such such a big fan of Pip and Jane Baker, that the writing team that uh, that worked on Doctor Who during this time period. I, I think they really didn't understand Doctor Who well. Uh, their episodes tend to be some of the weaker episodes, but the, Ran the character of Randy is actually pretty fantastic. This here is Colin Baker, the, the one that I mentioned before, and uh, that's the uh, the first appearance of the Randy. Ironically, they would bring the Randy back. In time in the Rani. <laughs> and uh, this one here is the first appearance of Sylvester McCoy. Now, Sylvester McCoy would go on to become one of the great doctors of all time, specifically because of something called the Cartmel Plan. Uh, not related at all. It's just the, they just have the same last name. But you're not the first person to ask that. A lot of people ask that, actually, especially when they're first getting into Doctor Who. Um, Colin Baker had been mostly famous before playing Doctor Who uh, and on the seri series The Brothers, which was a, uh, a popular British program uh, back in the day. 
he'd been known as a guy that had played baddies. In actuality, he actually playing the Doctor wasn't his first time on Doctor Who. He played uh, Lieutenant Maxwell, who tries to kill Doctor Who during Peter Davison's era. He was the first actor to ever act on the show and then come back and play the Doctor. He wouldn't be the last, though. We'd get that happen again with Peter Campaldi in the New Era series. Tom Baker was, in a, was definitely in a few things. Um, like the, he was uh, he played Rasputin on like a, in a in a in a TV film. He did a lot of movies. He was in like Vault of Horror in my favorite episode of Vault of Horror. Um, he was in a God. He was in a Harryhausen film. <clears throat> I can't quite remember which one. It was one of the Sinbad ones. Uh, but this this is. I actually like this. This is my, when you ask my least favorite era, it's, it's this here. So, well, yeah, he plays the, uh, well, you know, anyway, he plays the, the painter uh, in, the, in the voodoo storyline that they did. You see Peter Christian and John Hurt? Well, they'd be famous, like, as in, like, a lot of people know, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people do know who, who Tom Baker is. Uh, but I'd say probably David Tennant right now would probably be the most famous actor that's ever played Doctor Who. As I want to that was so that's the thing that's like like uh, that that is John Pertwee that is the guy that played War, Wars of Gummidge he did that like much later afterwards now this is Paradise Towers this is uh, I think this, this is Ace right is this Ace no no we're still in the Mel era oh Capaldi's famous all right <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> that that is him. Uh, so Mel was the dot one that played the companion before uh, was taken over by a more famous, well, a better suited actress. So before I get into any of them, I'm going to show you my favorite Doctor Who sets that I got. Three of my favorite ones. And for many people, this was a good starting on point. It was a good jumping in point for if you wanted to see some really classic, cool Doctor Who. I love the thick. I've actually got the complete thick of it series downstairs. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Obviously, you could not talk the way he talked on the thick of it in, uh, in there. I also liked him as, as, the, uh, as the bad guy in the Three Musketeers series, too, that he was in. Obviously, that's during the time he was in Doctor Who, but like the thick of it I have downstairs. Uh, so these were revisitation sets. So basically what happened is that when they originally did a lot of the really popular Doctor Who episodes, when they put them on, on DVD, uh, what happened was the, the BBC rushed to get out the most famous episodes of Doctor Who. What did that mean? Well, less than stellar transfers and very, very little when it came to the special features department. Oh, Peter Capaldi, yes, he was in the uh, Fires of Pompeii. Uh, the reason that he, I love John Wesley Shipp, but I also, also like the new guy too. I love the new Flash. Uh, <clears throat> my favorite character is Harrison Wells from Flash. But the, so basically what they did, they said, okay, but we got all these really good episodes of Doctor Who and all these newer episodes that weren't as good got all this like features and documentaries and all the stuff on it so i said why don't we go back let's revisit the the original stuff that we put out the really good the best of doctor who and put it with like a better transfer and many more features so that's what they did now in a way this is a precursor to what we've got right now if uh you're wondering why i'm making this episode right now it's because i've recently gotten into and discovered uh, Grant Gustin actually <laughs> uh, and got to and, and discovered the, uh, the the Blu-ray box sets the Blu-ray box sets takes a complete series a complete year of Doctor Who and puts it on Blu-ray with bunches of new features and uh, new transfers it's incredible it is the revisitation of now so uh, this was the original revisitations. Uh, there's been two 
Tom Baker years that have been put out so far. There's been the first Peter Davison year that's been put out. And the next one coming out is uh, Series 10, which is the uh, the Doctor Who uh, for uh, with with John Pertwee. Where's the gummage? So this is the first revisitation set. Just to let you guys know what was in it. It had Doctor Who the movie. This is the, the Fox film. Uh, that, uh, as you can see, the master is played by Eric Roberts. I'm not joking. He's played by Eric Roberts. This is Paul McGann. A lot of people knew him before this from, like, uh, Alien 3. But uh, I knew him. I had seen him in a movie called Paper Mask. Uh, actually, it's a pretty good little thriller. Basically, it's, uh, it's about this guy that wants to be a doctor. And, uh, but, you know, he just, he doesn't. You know, he doesn't have the... Uh, I'm not sure he doesn't have the grades. He, he just can't. He can't get there. So at the beginning of the film, uh, there this guy dies in a in a car accident. Who is going to become a doctor at this new place? Start with the Tom Baker stuff, and I find usually to go back, and you can go back there in the front, or or you can start with like the John Pertwee stuff. It really depends on what you're into. Uh, but it's this is pretty bad. Uh, it it's not bad. It's like it's it's good for what it is, but it's uh, it's definitely not the best of Doctor Who. Now my favorite episode for from the Peter Davison era is this one right here, the Caves of Androzani. This is the last episode that he did. It's really good. This has the the this has Perry, and trust me, that that picture does not do her justice. She is actually extremely gorgeous, and uh, let's many dads would watch Doctor Who back in the day to see Perry. Oh, yes, I do. I love with Nona. <laughs> um, yep, <laughs> he will have to do his own thing. This is the Towns of Wing Chang. Now, this is, of course, is the, uh, the again, the horror era of Doctor Who. You can see him in a kind of like a Sherlockian Holmes, Holmesian type of outfit. Um, really good episode, actually. <clears throat> Re Resolution box set number two because he did three of these has some great episodes another fantastic Dalek episode is Resurrection of the Daleks and this is one of my favorite lines where basically when, when she quits she says uh, it's just not it's just no fun anymore doctor What's the best withnol edition to get? I'm not sure. I got the one of the the arrow ones, the with the big, the big long one with the slip cover, the big book one, with that as uh, how to get ahead in advertising on it. I de definitely recommend getting the arrow edition. If you can get that edition, I recommend it. <clears throat> this is Carnival Monsters with uh, John uh, with John Pertwee. Now this is the tenth series of Doctor, I think. Of course, this is the classic one. Is Peter Troughton in? Seeds of Death, which is a really good episode. That's an early appearance of the Ice Warriors right there. Who were considered very scary back in their day. <clears throat> Hopefully I'll get through this episode, guys. Because <clears throat> my voice, my voice is going. Yeah, that's a really great release. One of my favorites is Robots of Death. This is Agatha Christie Murder Mystery in Space. This is exactly what this is. And if you like the murder mystery stuff... Uh, this is a really good episode. Pertwee, uh, Baker's extremely good on this one here. Definitely check it out. Next up, we've got The Three Doctors, which is a fun like one, getting all the three doctors together. Now, William Hartnell was sick at the time. This was when he was very sick, actually. So his scenes are shot de separately from the other doctors. He's basically sitting down, and we get to see him in this episode over a monitor. But this is the first appearance of Omega, who would be a, a character that I'm surprised New Who hasn't brought him back yet. Uh, I'm guessing it's only a matter of time because Omega was extremely, like, cool villain that done today. And of course, the classic Tomb of the Cybermen. This is the Cybermen done right. For unfortunately, for most of New Who, they really haven't done a very good job with the Cybermen. Cybermen were extremely big threats. They were extremely scary. All around Warren, yeah. She passed away actually a couple days ago. 
<clears throat> but if you want to see the Sarmen be scary, you're not going to see it in the new series of Doctor Who. But you will see it here. Now, before I get into my other classic box sets, I'll go through these really quickly. And uh, some people wonder, like, different ways to start with the show. Uh, well, there's the, revis the revisited sets. So what they would do... Did you really? The Tomb was one of the episodes I love. I love the Cybermen, actually. They put these out. So during the anniversary of Doctor Who, they did the Doctor Who Revisited. So if you've never had Doctor Who before, this is actually kind of cool. So there'd be these, you know, 40 minute to an hour long documentaries. One for each of these four doctors here in this set, okay? Now, what, you, what would happen in, in the BBC was they would show the documentary and directly after that, they would choose a serial that they thought best represented that era of, uh, of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, they will definitely be giving those new special effects. Fingers crossed they'll give the new special effects. I find it neat to see them both. Well, you know, obviously Star Trek did that too when they did part of their sets. So each doctor got a documentary of his own. So if you didn't know much about the doctor of that era, you could watch this documentary. You know, it's a ni nice way to pick it up. And you, get, and you also get the episodes as well. So for the first doctor, the Aztecs was what they chose. For the second doctor, the obvious was Tomb of the Cybermen. The third doctor got Spearhead from Space, which not his best episode, but it's his first episode. It was the first doctor episode in color, which is probably why they chose it. And for the fourth Doctor, they gave the excellent Pyramids of Mars. But there's so many to choose from the fourth Doctor. But this was a good way to like to get into Doctor originally. Now the uh, I'm not sure if I got it here or not. Now I don't. One of these had a uh, and these each have a, their own disc, by the way. They had fridge magnets in them, Doctor Who fridge magnets. So this is the second one they put out. That uh, this has the, the next four doctors. We got Colin Baker, Peter Davison, Sylvester McCoy, and Paul McGann here. Include a set of four collectible fridge magnets. I'm not sure if I got them in here or not. Now I don't actually. I used to have them put on the fridge. I think we lost them. It's true. And the episodes they chose for these, well, for the fifth Doctor, they chose Earthshock. If you've never seen it, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but uh, it shocked a lot of kids back in the day. For the sixth Doctor, Vengeance on Varos. Definitely one of the better episodes for there. And, and I think the introduction of Syl, the new X-Men and Child's Play. I did, actually, I'm kind of interested in Child's Play. And uh, the new X-Men one, I'll watch it. Uh, Remember the Daleks were chosen for the seventh Doctor, and of course, Paul McGann only had one to choose, so that was going to be Doctor of the Movie. So that's on here. Just because I had them here, they had a couple of the newer ones, so this was just the Doctor, Who, the new Doctor Who Christmas specials. So grab those. As you can see, there's Peter Capaldi, David Tennant. That's the jacket I was wearing, and uh, Matt Smith. Best regeneration for me. It's a uh, from the 5th to the 6th, actually. I like that. Oh, thanks for coming in, Adrian, and uh, hopefully you'll get to see the rest of it later. Um, and have a good evening. Um, I like the 4th the, the to the 5th and the 5th to the 6th are my two best, my favorite generations. I, I go back and forth on each of those. Um, I like the, the idea of the Watcher character, which was never used afterwards, which was in the 4th to the 5th. And I like the, uh, when, he come, when he comes up, basically, and he says... Uh, Give me a second. I gotta check something. We have, we sometimes have creatures outside. I'll be right back, hopefully.
cat outside. I always have to check because you never know. Sorry about that. <clears throat> You're gonna hear the cat meowing at another cat over there. Anyway, so I uh, also had a the Cyberman set. These are the new looking Cybermen. Uh, and this has like, actually has Earthshock and a Cyberman documentary on here as well. <laughs> I'm also glad Denix turned as well. And this is Daleks, so it's uh, modern day Daleks and includes the genesis of the Dalek storyline. This is a good way to get like some different Dalek stuff. What time is it here? Actually, it's a good question. It is only 11.35 here actually, Javid. All right. This is an original Doctor Who box set. This has the uh, the Space Museum and the Chase. Now, one little interesting fact about the uh, about the Chase is that it originally was supposed to have the the uh, my guess, my guess, sorry. Oh, thanks for coming in, Ben. Especially love the fact that we have Doctor Who fans in here, and to definitely come back again. So this one here is the, the Space Museum, the Chase. The Space Museum. Yeah, it was originally supposed to have the Beatles. You know, like a dead skin stuck um, in it, but their manager wouldn't let them do it. I'm not doing these in any particular order because actually I'm kind of tired. <laughs> and this is the Trial of a Time Lord box. I remember the one I told you about with the really great documentary on, uh, on Doctor Who. And if you wanted to hear Doctor in Distress, which is the... Uh, Okay, there's nothing there now. Yes, yes, it's exactly, that laugh is exactly who you think it is. Sill, I was a, not a fan of Sill after he did that too. It's Perry. It makes you think, which fate is worse? Like, is, is, is it a worse fate, you know, being, being killed or... Being a okay enough. <laughs> Is being a ch married to Brian Blessed and being like a, a warrior queen. No, that's all there is. Yes, warrior cat. So next, uh, this. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Actually, I'm I'm glad. I'm glad they don't like make a drag longer. This is the Black Guardian trilogy. This was kind of like a big one. Uh, basically, they brought in the character of Turlo as a companion. But they wanted to do something different, so this companion wanted to kill the Doctor. He was actually brought in there covertly by the Black Guardian to destroy, kill Doctor Who. This is actually a pretty great set. This is the New Beginning set. This has uh, the Keeper of Traken, which we've spoken about. Yes, it is the original Palpatine. Uh, Legopolis. And Castro Velva. Okay. The cat can't hear you. The outside door cat can't hear you. Uh, so this is basically the change from Tom Baker to, to Peter Davison. Again, this has a great hour-long documentary on the final days of like Tom Baker and the and the uh, kind of the takeover for or Peter Davison. Every time, every year, especially in the later years, Tom Baker would say, well, I, I guess it's time, you know, I don't think I'm going to do anymore. It's going to be like, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do like the, I'm not going to do any more Doctor Who. And they'd always say, no, come on, Tom, you can do one more year. You know, one more year won't be too bad. And, uh, at the end of the, at the beginning of this year, he said, "Well, you know, maybe I shouldn't do anymore." He said, "I've been doing that for for, almost, for like six years, going on seven years," and he's like, "And nobody said anything. Nobody said maybe you should do another one, Tom. Nobody made a sound, as they were told to, not by by John Nathan Turner." Then Baker got the hint. Turner wanted a new Doctor Who for his era. Is that there was this incredible key to time. This is a year that, if you're a fan of 
of uh, Gary, of uh, Gary Scalks. If you're a fan of, uh, what am I trying to say, guys? If you're a fan of Douglas Adams, this is the year that Douglas Adams took over as Doctor Who. Why would this be the last Star Wars you're ever going to see? They'll, they'll just do like new stuff with like different characters and stuff. It'll just be like, you know, the Star Wars universe type of thing. And that's going to be fears down the road, I think. I think that maybe, you know, for some people, you know, you, your Star Wars in your, in your period and you, maybe the newer stuff doesn't interest you. Maybe it's for a younger audience or for a different audience. Because, you know, that does happen. You, people can grow some of the things that they, that they liked originally. Fortunately, that is so true. Mary Tam is the girl, is the girl that played Romana in the hair, by the way. Uh, the role was taken over in the second year by uh, his wife at the time, actually would be his wife, uh, played by Layla Ward. I think the only thing that makes me not <clears throat> want to watch Star Wars, like on... Okay, kitty. Okay. <laughs> is basically, and I'll be honest with you, is just the negativity of, I don't really think of them as fans, uh, of, you know, of, of the fan base. Um, like, not liking the movie is okay. Saying the movie ruined your entire life. Uh, not so, not so okay. Because <laughs> you get that. You get like people will say, what, what's the tracky comment? I missed the comment there, did I? About Trek? I like Star Trek. Uh, nobody diss on Star Trek. Just saying that right now. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. <clears throat> I like all the geeky stuff. You can disagree with me, but no dissing Star Trek allowed. Now, this is the Dalek Wars. This is the John Pertwee era. Uh, this was like the Frontiers in Space planned out of the Daleks one. Uh, speaking of like Star Trek and type characters, these creatures here kind of do look Klingonish. Not cool to say. Not cool at all. In case you're unaware, you know. Negativity is not like taken well in the channel. Just a heads up for future reference. <clears throat> we shan't have any Star Trek versus Star Wars wars here. And if we did, I'd be the judge. So yeah, most people can like Doctor Who and can like Star Trek and can like Star Wars. Um, some people like to be divisive. It's not cool. And for like fans, actual fans and stuff, and not just like people that like kind of troll and stuff like that, uh, you know, you can agree and disagree. So with this is the Peladon series. Now, so this is the Monster Peladon and the Curse of Peladon. When uh, there was a a period when people were upset when they announced the new Doctor, because the new Doctor was 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 the girl for the first time, it's female. Um, and uh, there was a portion of society of the of the internet that that got extremely that extremely bothered them they couldn't they couldn't grasp it so it became like the uh, the uh, the storyline basically was uh, this is too I don't know they said it's too politically correct or SJW all that type of stuff all the silly stuff right 
at the time that that, that you know that became a big deal and became a big controversy and stuff like that, I just like harken people back to watching the Peladon episodes of uh, of Doctor Who, and he said, "Well, you know, what's this? You know, it, it's pushing an agenda. It's making Doctor Who all political. Doctor Who is the most political show you can possibly." imagine uh, it really is it, it deals like so, sci-fi in general uh, shows like Star Trek for instance that, that, that's one of the things that was done it was done so it could deal with certain issues that were more testy and you weren't able to really like talk about just regularly on television at the time uh, it was a way to do that uh, so when People get upset and say, you know, it's, it's agenda S or there's, you know, or, you know, or, or the whole like social justice work, I know, drama type stuff. I just say, are you serious? Doctor Who is the original social justice work. <laughs> All right. Just got a few more. Okay, so just to let everybody know, uh, having a decent debate is okay. Uh, that is fine. Uh, like calling people down for their opinions or trolling them is something that may end up getting you banned. I, I just got to let you know that now uh, because I kind of don't like to, uh, I, I just like to keep it about the, the films and the shows and keep it positive. Uh, everybody has their own opinion, movie-wise, TV show-wise, politics-wise. That's why I, uh, I normally don't talk about a lot of that stuff here. Um, is I just want it to be a nice, safe space. So if people, even if people don't agree with me or any, any, my thoughts or my stuff like that, it's okay because they got their own opinions and, and ideas and ideals. And uh, that's one of the things about this here. And about the uh, about the whole movie club, and it doesn't matter like if you're like Star Wars or Star Trek, if you're a conservative, if you're democratic, if you're socialist, if you're communist. I it, that doesn't matter to me. I uh, I'm here about the film, and uh, that's where uh, where it's going to stay. So uh, <clears throat> just to let you know. But we won't go into ragging on each other's stuff, or we won't like try and troll other people and stuff like that. Because this isn't the. I'll be honest, uh, trolls do come in there sometimes, and it's not a. This isn't a, an area that's conducive to trolling. And they tend to seem like very, very lonely after. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just being proactive, warlock. Anyway, we're getting into the, to the uh, to the last of Doctor Who stuff. Just got a few box sets to show you guys, and then uh, then, then I got to get some tea because I'm so I don't know if you guys noticed my my voice is going. Uh, this is the seventh Doctor set. That's good. Okay, it's just it's good to get ahead of these things, Sasha. You've got to be sure. Uh, uh, that's why I, you know. I want people to have a good time. So this is the Ace series. Ace was probably one of the most popular companions in the end. She uh, was like one of the more physical ones. She was younger. She she had a bunch of bombs that she made. Uh, she was a really cool character. And uh, the modern day show, <laughs> uh, the modern day series for uh, Doctor Who was this would be the companion that they would pretty much go with, the style companion. What about all the Who spinoffs? Well, I'll mention that. <clears throat> There's not a lot, really, when you think about it. There, in, the, in the modern day era, there was, uh, there was Torchwood, uh, which, of course, was with uh, John Berriman. There was the Sarah Jane Chronicles with Elizabeth Slayton until she passed away. And there was a recent one, Class, which, um, which got canceled, actually, very quickly. Uh, and in the original era of Doctor Who, uh, the, the only one I can really think of was kind of like, uh, that they tried to do a spinoff with was, uh, K-9 and Friends, uh, which would have been K-9 and Sarah Jane on Earth. 
but that only made it to the pilot episode and there never went any after that. The only, I guess there's one other, which is kind of a spinoff, which is the Australian series K-9, uh, which deals with, uh, with K-9 actually regenerating because it gets a regeneration chip. The Auton Specials. Are you talking about the probe ones? Because uh, there were like, they weren't official Doctor Who, but there were some ones that were done like during the time the Doctor Who wasn't around that weren't official Doctor Who episodes. Uh, the, you know, the probe ones kind of come to mind. The Aton one comes to mind. Uh, okay, you're Batman. Uh, and uh, like stuff like that, like kind of, kind of stands out. Uh, and of course, you know, it was, there was like a unit one, I think, and there was an Aton special or two. Uh, those were done like kind of, you know, they got away with as much as they could without uh, <clears throat> going in a... Uh, Going, going further into it. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any of those. And of course, there's the big finish audios, which are fantastic. This is the Myths and Legends set. Uh, it's kind of neat because you get to see two doctors. So you got the, you got like the Horns of Nimon, Underworld, and the Time Monster, which is John Pertwee. Speaking of Autons, there's Mannequin Mania. These used to freak me. I was creeped over these guys. And here, See if I can do this. There's Terror of the Atons. Yeah, exactly, I thought this out by BBC and Spearhead from Space. The silver one is John Pertwee. Just so you know, that's the John Pertwee. Speaking of canine and spinoffs, this is uh, the canine tales, and it has Invisible Enemy, which is the first episode of a. Uh, with that canine is in and there's a girl's best friend which is the canine and friends uh, episode <clears throat> the pilot episode that was done this is revenge of the Cybermen and the silver nemesis box set and uh that uh is tom baker's signature right there that is actually tom baker's signature i'm actually a really big fan of revenge of the Cybermen. revenge of the Cybermen was the first uh, Doctor Who episode to get a VHS release. It was the first ever like media release for, v for Doctor Who. This is Beneath the Surface, and this is basically the, the Sea Devils, the, Sol the, Sol the Solorans. Uh, and you get three here. You get Doctor Who and the Solorans, the Sea Devils, and you get, what's it called again? Wars, yeah, Wars of the Deep. Great stuff on here, by the way. The unit files had Invasion of the Dinosaurs and the Android Invasion. The Android Invasion really creeped me out for that one sequence, actually, where this one is autographed by Benton. It was one of the unit guys. Uh, where basically there's these androids that have taken over like uh, humans, uh, like, you know, taken their place, kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers type thing. There's a sequence where kind of like Sarah Jane falls in. Well, it's not really Sarah Jane, actually. It's her... It, it's a, it's like, it's, it's, I think Sergey. It's like, a, it's an android in place. And there's this like android. The face comes off and this is what you see. And it seems silly now, but back in the day it was like really freaking creepy. There's the Legacy Collection, which has uh, Shada, which for years was, and more than 30 years in the TARDIS, which is a documentary by Doctor Who. And last but not least, it's Bread for War, the Suntaran Collection. And this actually gets three Doctors. This was the first box set I ever bought from Doctor Who. It is on CBS All Access, actually. That's the stream service that it's on. You can find it other ways. I think it's on, on Sci-Fi here in, uh, in Canada, actually. So it's a Time War, the Suntaran Experiment, Invasion of Time, and the Two Doctors. Centaurans were ex extremely popular. Now, now that we've gone through all that, my entire Doctor Who collection, it's quite a lot, huh? Uh, and it's actually, when you see how much Doctor Who is out there, it's really nothing compared to like what's, what's, what's out there with Doctor Who. Hey, uh, you're watching season one? I, I actually really, I've only seen the first three episodes. I haven't seen the fourth one, so don't spoil it for me. Uh, but uh, out of the first, I, like, I think I like the third episode best. As it has, it's the tensest episode. It's they're all good, but the third episode I really liked. 
because it has a strong feeling of repercussion. Something can happen. Something serious can happen. Oh, the original show. Okay. I'm sure they'll re release the new one on Blu-ray. I hope they do anyway. Because I've got all the other ones. I, even on DVD. I'll take, them, take it on DVD. I'm okay to wear with that. Um, but yeah, so the new Doctor, Doctor Who has been put on as like... A, the, what they originally did was they put out the last... They put out the first season of Tom Baker on Blu-ray with a bunch of new features. So if anybody wanted to start watching, that's a great place to start. Then they put out Peter Davison, the first season of Peter Davison, which again, it's another fantastic place to start for Doctor Who. Uh, then the third Blu-ray release that they put out was the last season of Tom Baker, which goes right into the first season of uh, Peter Davison. So having those sets right next to each other, you can watch the Tom, you can go get them, you can watch the Tom Baker's last season, right, and go right in and watch the first season of uh, Peter Davison there, and you get the whole, you get the whole, the whole story. And, and they all have a bunch of new features and extras and better, you know, much better transfers, because it's Blu-ray, of course, there's more that they can do on a disc. And uh, recently, they announced that John Pertwee's 10th season, that season 10, for John Pertwee, uh, that's one of the last John Pertwee seasons, uh, actually, um, is coming to Blu-ray. It's an odd combination the way they're doing it, but I'm actually I gotta start getting them before it goes too far into it. Before I'm so far behind that I'm trying to catch up. It's already got three out there right now with the fourth coming out, so I do want to get them before they uh, before they don't before I, before it's you know it's, before it becomes a daunting task to get. And I do agree. I wish Paul McGann would have gotten a better chance on uh, for playing the Doctor than he did. I guess what we can hope, what we can be glad about Warlock is that there is the, uh, the big finish audios, so we can actually still listen to Paul McGann as the Doctor and like hear his, his take on the, on the character, which I thought was fantastic. Region, I, it's actually, yes, I think it was. I'm going to just check now, Warlock. I'm pretty sure that it's coming in both Region A and Region B, but I'm going to go onto my Amazon CA here. And I'll find it for sure. Yep. So as you can see, it would be called Season 4 here. It's called Season 10 in the UK. You're not going to get a very good look at it, but that is the John Pertwee disc. You, uh, Know that it's not the, uh, the UK one because it doesn't have the UK label on it and it doesn't have a big box set like the other ones do. The book, well, the, for a while, the books were the only way you could find, see a lot of these episodes. They weren't available to buy and uh, some of them were lost forever. Uh, so getting the, the, the books, some of the books were actually written by, I mentioned Harry earlier on, the guy that unfortunately only played the companion for one se series of Doctor Who. But uh, he actually was a writer on... Uh, on some of these, uh, on some of the Doc True novelizations that came out, because he was a really big fan of the show. So yeah, the uh, the new series is uh, the new John Pertwee one that that'll be coming out. And <clears throat> just so you guys will know what exactly you're getting with that, I'm going to see if I can get to do it here really quickly. So bear with me for one moment. It's going to take me a second, I promise. So, here we go. This is the fun part. So, the, the third Doctor played in Series 7, Series 8, Series 9, Series 10, and Series 11. So, Series 10, or Series 4, in, in uh, North America, is what will be coming out next. That includes the Three Doctors episode, which was a, a four-parter. Carnival of Monsters, another fantastic four-parter. Frontier in Space, which is a, a six-parter, followed by, and these two go together, actually. Uh, Planet of the Dialects. Like, but I haven't got any of them yet, Warlock. i got to get them, which is another six-parter. And the Green Death ends it off with another six-parter. 
So obviously there's a lot on there. So that's uh, five serials stories altogether. Now for the fourth Doctor, what they did was they did season 12, which was his first season. And uh, that has, like, if you want to get that one, guys, that has Robot, which is a fantastic story, by the way. It's a four-parter. Ark in Space is really good. That's another four-parter. The Santaran Experiment is a, is a two-parter. Green Death is a really good one. That's the maggot fuck. And the Genesis of the Daleks on Blu-ray is a six-parter. And Revenge of the Sarman ends off that season with a, uh, with a four-parter. Season 18, or the last season for uh, Tom Baker, is also on Blu-ray. That has The Leisure Hive, which I showed you there. Megalus, which is an, kind of an infamous one. Full Circle. Which one's that? What's your favorite? State of Decay, Warrior's Gate, The Keeper of Trekken, and Logopolis. So you actually get seven stories uh, in, the, in that one. So that was like, an, I think, an eight-disc set, because you usually have like a bonus disc with them. And then we have the first season of, uh, of Peter Davison, where you're going to get Cash Travalva. Fantastic story, by the way. Really well, really great, like, uh, wet set design of that one. For to Doomsday, which is really the first one they, that they filmed. The Cash Travalva was filmed second. Kinda, The Visitation, The Black Orchid, Earthshock, and Time Flight. So that's a lot of Doctor Who that you can get uh, for actually fairly cheap. Uh, you have to understand, when I bought things like these, Green Death, Inferno's fantastic. I love Inferno. Uh, when I bought things like this here, this cost me over $30 to buy. Uh, you could get them on sale sometimes for $25 or so. Uh, and if you were really lucky, you'd, you'd find one of these for $20 for one story. Just, just one. Just one story. You'd have to, like, go to the, you know, go look to the UK to get sets like this. Because if you wanted to get uh, something like uh, some of the other sets they could, that were done in North America, they could get pretty expensive at times. So the fact that we're getting whole series, whole seasons, I guess, of Doctor Who, uh, now, like the, of the classic show with all the original features plus a bunch of more features, um, you, uh, it, it's, it was, it's, a great, it's a great time to become a Doctor Who fan. If you've never got into it before, now is a really great time to get them on Blu-ray, to get some of these classic stories, some of this amazing stuff. h and yeah, that's where I got a lot of mine from Warlock originally. My North America, you see I don't have a lot of North America ones, but this one here, for instance, that would have been an h and one. That one, that one to cost around 30 now, this one here was on like a sale, I think like on a two for 20 sale at the time, the Crotons, and I think it was the Awakenings, was the two that I got together. I'm really looking forward to checking it out. I want to see the behind the sofa featurette that they did, features that they do where they actually show people, I think it's Katie Manning, people like that actually watching the episodes and kind of like commenting on them. I'm really, really intrigued with that. There's so many great documentaries on those there and uh, so much new stuff on there. And with, with that all being said, at almost a hundred and well, 111 minutes, going on 112 minutes, so we almost got reached the two-hour mark here. Uh, although I did lose some people along the way because they weren't Doctor Who fans. I, I'm a little saddened by that, actually. That uh, But my battery is under 10% because... It buzzes when I plug it in to, to charge it. So I'm going to go, not behind the sofa, but I'm going to go into the kitchen and, uh, and make some tea. Hi, am Aaron. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I had a fantastic evening with you guys. Uh, thanks for keeping me company while my better half is away. Uh, you guys are the movie club. You guys rock. You make it awesome. Uh, Kitty Cat's okay. He's just, he's looking outside the window again now. I'll look in there to see uh, if the cat's going to come back. Because he's in like warrior cat mode until the cat comes. <laughs> and, and, and just in case the cat comes back, then he's going to be meowing around here again. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for having a, for, it's been great. Have a great evening. And uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, check your Doctor Who. Classic Who. It's bigger on the inside.